So we're looking at the chain rule here. We've seen it before, but we're going to do it with a whole bunch of different functions. All right, so the idea with the chain rule is very, very simple. You use the chain rule when there's a function inside another function. Uh, now we call this a uh, composite function. And I'll show you a bunch of examples here. That's going to be the easiest way to see a chain rule question. All right, so here we've got uh, four examples here of what we're going to do the chain rule with. Now, we've done a chain rule question like this before. We've sort of got a shortcut for it, but I'm going to do it the long way here so we can see what's happening. Now, when we say it's a function inside another function, we can, we can look at this in a simplified way. We can say that I could let x squared plus 2 equal the letter u. Now, if I do that, the function becomes f of x equals 5u to the power of 7. Uh, now, if I want to find uh, the derivative of this function, what I need to do is find the derivative of this function and multiply it by the derivative of this function, u. All right, so uh, let's do it all. We'll do it all in one step here. So we've got uh, the derivative of that, which is uh, 7 times 5, 35 um, u to the 6. And then we need to multiply it by the derivative of u. So x squared plus 2. So we're multiplying it by 2x. Now, what's the result of this? Well, uh, 2x times 35u to the 6, that's going to be 70x, uh, and then multiplying that by u to the 6. And then as our final step here, u is not u, u is x squared plus 2. So I can put x squared plus 2 in for u, and I'll get 70x x squared plus 2 to the power of 6. Alright, so what have I done? I've sort of pretended that that's just u, I've pretended that it's a letter, and I've said 5u to the 7, and I've derived 5u to the 7, and then I've multiplied it by the derivative of whatever it was that I was pretending was u. Alright, so let's take a look at this one, ln x squared. Now, this is a function, ln x, inside of a function, x squared. So, I can let ln x equal u. So that means that f of x, oh, I should write in f dash x there. That's the, that's the answer, f dash x equals 70x bracket x squared x. Okay. Uh, f of x equals, so now it's just u squared. All right, so now to find the derivative, it's going to be equal to the derivative of uh, u squared, which is our 2u, multiplied by the derivative of whatever u was. So the derivative of ln x is 1 on x. All right, so what do I get? Uh, now, u isn't u. u is ln x. So now I have 2 ln x multiplied by 1 over x. And I get this nice little answer, 2 ln x over x. Now, it's tempting to sort of look at that x and that x and try to start cancelling stuff. That's the natural log of x, so you can't, can't cancel it. Okay, so looking at it again, I started at ln x squared. I looked inside of it and said, okay, if I let ln x equal u, it's a really simple function. It's just u squared. I find the derivative of u squared, and I multiply it by the derivative of the thing that I let equal u. Answer. All right, this one here. Uh, f of x equals the square root of all of e to the 5x plus 1. So if I let e to the 5x plus 1 equal u, then the function becomes really straightforward f of x is now just um, the square root of u, which is the same as u to the one half. Now, if I want to find the derivative, so f dash x, 
All I need to do is find the derivative of u to the half, uh, which is one half u to the negative one half, and multiply it by the derivative of e to the 5x plus 1. Now the derivative of e to the 5x plus 1, well the 1 is going to disappear, and e to the 5x, we bring the derivative of 5x out the front, that'll be 5, so it's 5 e to the 5x. Now of course, um, u is not u, it's e to the 5x plus 1, so I have a nice little half bracket, e to the 5x plus 1 to the power of negative a half, times 5e to the 5x. I'll just go one more line here. A half times 5 is 5 over 2. I'll bring that e to the 5x over this side. e to the 5x. And e to the 5x plus 1 to the power of negative a half is the same as bringing it to the bottom of a fraction as a square root, because negative a half, a half is a square root. Um, e to the 5x plus 1. Um, Alright, so the derivative of that, the funky bit, let that be u, find the derivative of u, of the function u, and find the derivative of the thing that you let equal u, and then you've got an answer. The very last question here, f of x equals 5 sine 4, 2x plus 5. Now that 4, that means um, sine to the power of 4. So all of the, so we rewrite it as 5 times sine 2x plus 5 to the power of 4. So all, I need another bracket there, all of that to the power of 4. Okay, so how can I deal with this? Well, it's a function inside a larger function. Function. So I can say that f of x equals uh, 5u to the 4. And now if I want a derivative, find the derivative of that, it's f of x equals uh, the derivative of 5u to the 4, so 20u uh, to the 3. Now I didn't really write what u was, I was a bit lazy there. Um, u is equal to sine uh, 2x plus 5. So I should write let, let u equal sine 2x plus 5. Let's put that line in there. Alright, so what's the derivative of sine 2x plus 5? Well, the derivative of sine is cos. We need to take the derivative of that thing out. So that's 2. So now I need to multiply it by 2 cos um, 2x plus 5. Alright, so it's pretty good. It's looking pretty nice. Uh, the last step here is to put u back in, and so u is sine 2x plus 5. So now I have 20 sine bracket 2x plus 5. Now I could wrap that whole thing in, because I need to the power of 3 here for this, but I can put the 3 just there in between the sine and that bit there, and that says sine 2x plus 5 to the power of 3. And then multiplying it by 2 cos 2x plus 5. Whoa! Alright, so pretty funky. Uh, that happens pretty regularly when you're finding the derivative of like nested sine functions. You end up with a sine and a cos of some sort. Um, we can, there's a times 2 in here, so I can get rid of that times 2 and multiply that. So I end up with 20 times 2, which is 40. So 40 sine cubed 2x plus 5 times cos 2x plus 5. Uh, that is a whole bunch of the chain rule. We can use it for literally any of these functions that we're finding the derivative of.